six. He, he, if you wait for the three meetings, then he won't be, a, it'll, it'll be a new term. Yeah, I don't think we need to wait. Well, he, he has already been. He's been to all the meetings, but I'll, I'm going to add. I don't know. Well, I, I, I so, would check it with Marty. Yeah. But yeah, it's not it. prohibiting it. It's, it's kind of, um, I don't know. I, I would do it. If he I wants to so, do yeah, it. Yeah, the point was to make sure they were. Some they were. Been involved yeah, in and, that, and they at least attended three meetings, which yeah. didn't mean they automatically, like you said, you know, just attending three meetings doesn't mean it. It needs the approval of the chair of the board, the committee chair and the chair of the board. The chair of the board. Okay. So we can start now. Uh, we. Uh, oh, Carol. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah, she's at least present, so she gets credit for being here. Can you write? Oh, where's. She's trying to see by you. Yeah. Oh, okay. But she actually did come, so that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but we can skip because as soon as if yeah, we don't need to vote. Once he comes, well, we can approve the minutes later. later once we have quorum, doesn't have to be quorum for the whole meeting. Yeah. That's fine. So we'll skip skip quorum. Only to conduct official business. Yeah. But he would need. So we could skip down, actually, I think we should skip to item four, which is DEP updates, because Effie is on. Hi, Effie. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. So we could just accelerate to there and come back, and then go back up to the top later, because we are waiting for one more person before we have quorum to approve minutes anyway. Um, so DEP issues, um, the main, the one thing people are asking, and you answered kind of a little bit, was the pump station. Um, right. Who had? I have. Yeah. In Riverdale, the Riverdale okay. Park pump Don't station. Don't forget to start the recording. Uh, it is. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye. Yeah, it is. Perfect. Um, and I guess there was. You guys were fighting with Con Ed. Well, not fighting. We we had some uh, some. Uh, you know, issues, I guess. Um, but um, work is progressing well now. Um, we, we had a little bit of delay due to Con Edison uh, not bringing power. Uh, that was the issue. Um, but once the power was connected, um, once it's connected, we, we start the demolition of that existing uh, structure and shortly after on start with the new building. We're still aiming for completion by the end of the year. So I think I gave an overview of the sequence of work. Um, I had yeah. submitted that to the board. If you have any other concerns, you know, please let me know. But there's uh, nothing major that's different going on at this moment. And I apologize, my computer, my laptop is not working pro properly. So I'm calling from the phone and I'm looking at my computer because it's giving me a hard time. So um, I'm trying no, to pull no up problem, no problem. as I can, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is the one in Riverdale Park. Yeah, Riverdale Park. Correct. That's the Riverdale Park station. Wait, wait, the Palisade Avenue pumping station, that's not the same one that's in Riverdale Park. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah. 235th Street. Okay. Thank it you. Was I referred to one that was further down. Okay. Well, there's only one. Yeah. So, so fantastic. So. Could we get a, a um, maybe just for, maybe we get some more people on the board, like Carol, or I don't know if everybody knows what the history of this is. Um, and then I would also I would just love an update on the any remedi I haven't been over there any remediation in the um, for the the park itself. I think that we were waiting to make sure that the you know, the sidewalk restoration, pathway, all that stuff, and anything in the park. There was and I think there was supposed to be some landscaping and stuff in the park. Right now I got my head on. Yeah, there's one at 254th Street, honey, and then at 235th Street. Right, right, right. You know what? And I know. I was thinking of the one at, in Riverdale Park, but that's not the one we're talking about at all. Right. And you yes, said, right, in order yes. to abate any hazardous material, you guys were waiting on a permit for a crane, which is on no, schedule. No, it is the one on Riverdale, on, at, at, at what you said, Laura. 235th. It, it is the one. 
at 235th Street. It is on Palisade Avenue. It is at 235th Street. It is within the boundaries of Riverdale Park. Right. Okay. Had it halfway there. <laughs> So, um, so maybe Effie, Effie, you were saying that the, the DEP work will be done by the end of the year. Do you know the stat is the park, the, the, the work for the restoration of the landscaping, is that happening after? Or is no, no, no. Did you say DDC? No, DEP. Oh, okay, DEP. Sorry, I'm like I said, I can't really hear that well because I'm calling from my phone and it's um, my computer's not working. Um, Fine. I don't have any status on landscaping at the moment. Right now, we're just trying to do the actual construction work. Um, right. Um, we were having the contractor acquire the crane permit um, to abate any hazardous materials. They would need the crane. Um, the permit is expected to be obtained in the next week or two. This was like a couple of weeks ago that I had sent out this update. Um, so the abatement can be completed. Um, I don't have anything specific right now on the landscaping because we're not near that point. If you want me to get you that, I can get that. We've done a presentation to the board, so I'm sure we had, and unfortunately I can't pull it up on my laptop because it's, it's giving me a hard time. So I don't have the specifics on the landscaping at the moment. If you want me to get that for you, I can get that. That, that would be great. So that's the office and we'll, I'll send it around to this committee because sure, we'd all love to see that presentation anyway, even you don't need to give it to it, like present it, but we can look it up. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Let me, let me find the one that we had done to the community board, unless you guys find it before I do. Um, but I'll definitely get that back out to you and you can uh, look at it. If you have any specific questions, you can let me know. Uh, Effie, just mm -hmm. a reminder that it also needs to include the sidewalk and the wood barrier between the street and the sidewalk, besides, uh, you know, landscaping. Right. Um, let me share that with the board. And if there's any questions or concerns, please email them to me. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So will there be any more um, closing of the street? Um, I don't have that on right now. I don't see that. Yeah. It, it's been, it, you've had um, flagmen and it's worked out very smoothly. I don't yeah, believe I have not received that, that, I, that there was any street closures at all thus far. Mm -hmm. and, right. Um, DEP is to be congratulated. I think that's been very smooth. I don't think we've gotten any complaints. No, I have not heard any complaints. So thank you. Um, Yes, so um, we have not gotten any complaints on that. Okay. Great. Um, what was the other? Oh, yes. Which is. Right. Oh, the lead service line replacement program of what parts? Yeah, I guess. We've seen the whole thing, but where it overlaps with us. It's kind of very. Did you have a presentation for it? Yes. This so, is I mean, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Um, so, the lead service line replacement project, the um, presentation was shared by Marisol from the borough president's office. We were at their borough board meeting recently and did that presentation. I believe it involves um, a small section maybe of Riverdale, um, Kingsbridge area related. When you look at that map, it doesn't look very specific to me. So I did request the streets that are involved. Um, because that's very important. So we know exactly which boards um, are affected. Um, I assume you have that map in front of you, right? Because I can't share it at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll add it into the minutes, the whole presentation even, and it has a map, but it has, it doesn't have the streets and it just has like little correct. red blobs and you're like, so that area and you're like, okay. 
Right, like, exactly. Right. Like, uh, 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 right. They point out Carol Lake. Know that it's the area south of the reservoir between um, Reservoir and Kingsbridge Road. Yeah, it's like Kingsbridge yeah. Heights, I think. Um, yeah, it's like a little north, but there's like, if there's a break in the middle. Like, is that like each, yeah. like the green area is also, right? Right. Yeah, it's a green area. There's right, but just that top one that's really district eight. Yeah, below that's not a. Right, that's the next thing. So it's like, right, it's just right south of the reservoir there, yeah. that section. There are three different contracts. Um, the Bronx is the, the first borough that we are doing this program in. Um, I cannot pull up the presentation at the moment. Um, and I wasn't, we, we were not planning on presenting this tonight. Um, the person who did that um, wanted to be the one to do the rest of these presentations if any community board is requesting that. For the moment, so we can confirm which boards are involved, I've requested that they provide me with the list of streets. So I want to start there and get those list of streets, and then I can share them with everybody. Um, the presentation is not a very lengthy one. Um, you know, basically everybody is has two service lines for their properties. They have a water service line that brings you fresh drinking water from our city mains and a sanitary line that connects to the city sewer from your property. Um, this uh, program is specific for the drinking water service line. Um, many of these old um, buildings or homes have lead service lines. You as a property owner are responsible for replacing them. Um, and they can be very costly. Um, and this program, DEP would be doing it for free. So, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a good thing, but it is only for specific locations, as you saw on that map. Um, the criteria, they had certain criteria that was selected for where they would do this. It was specifically areas that are environmental justice, um, that have a, uh, a household income, I think, of uh, a little over $45,000, I think it was, um, and where there were clusters of lead service lines. Um, so uh, that's how they pick these locations. And like I said, the, the presentation has a little more detail than what I'm telling you, but I can't pull it up right now. Um, so I have it in front of me, and we yeah, all included fine. in the minutes. It yeah. says the contractor for us is whatever, J.R. Cruz Corp. There's but I guess, three right, different, things, right? we're kind of three different contractors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for each area. Correct. Uh, just a question. It, do the individual homes have to meet a certain income, uh, be below a certain income threshold, or was just the neighborhood itself picked because no, of the, the average home. household income? My understanding is the home. For that, it, it says specifically on the uh, presentation, but I believe it's for that, for the home. And also where there were clusters of lead service lines, and I guess that also had a household median income of whatever, uh, I think it was mid-40s, um, and in environmental yeah. justice areas. Oh, I see. Yeah, it says eligible homeowners will be contacted by DEP and only homeowners who have been contacted are eligible to participate. Correct. So the only people who can do it are the, the individual ones who end up getting the letters. But that doesn't fully answer your question. Right, because I, I assume that there are specific homes on the street that have been identified as qualifying broadly, but they, do they have to then submit paperwork on their income to qualify is my question. No, no. You send the, you send the letter to everyone in these streets? Letters were sent to those that qualify. So it's not like you have to fill out, it's not like you have to fill out paperwork in order to qualify. If you received that letter from DEP, that means you qualify. You need to contact the agency or we will contact you as long as you agree. Remember, the service line is your property. So you need to give us permission to do that replacement. But this is this is not for anybody. Uh, they, sh they can't just contact the agency and request that. Um, 
these are household incomes. I think they took they took the level of incomes through the census, maybe. Um, I think it may state on the presentation um, where they got the incomes um, from. Um, and, they said it was from the 2020 the, census data. Correct, there you go. And also um, the lead service lines, we would know, I guess, through our plumbing records that we have, and then it's environmental justice areas. And um, in the back, I think towards the end of that presentation, we do have a link where you can go um, online and view and see um, if you have a lead service line. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna resend the presentation to the board just so everybody can have it, yeah. Okay, David? Yeah, I'm just curious. Do you have an estimate of how many homes are are uh, uh, eligible? A thousand, ten thousand, a million? I have no idea. I don't recall when she did the presentation if she had a specific number of homes. For example, right now, it's the first contracts are in the Bronx. So those three contracts that you see are within the Bronx, but I'm not sure if it had a specific number of households. Um, we'll get you that information. I don't think it's on that presentation because then again, no. I wanted to know specific streets as well. I, I still have not received that also. But you guys probably did some sort of estimate citywide, how many are likely to be eligible, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they did that. And you know that's how they're picking locations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, it doesn't it doesn't give a number on that. It just gives those areas. And again, these are just the Bronx program areas of this first step because you're going to do this throughout the whole city in all five boroughs. Um, I'm not sure if it's all five boroughs or three or four of them. Um, that wasn't mentioned. Um, like I said, the the one time I heard about it was at that meeting that we did the presentation. So, um, you know, I think if you have specific questions about it, definitely please feel free to send me an email with any follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Do we have other, I don't think, was there any, anything else for Effie besides questions she wasn't prepared to answer? Um, thank you. I think, I mean, that's most of it because we already Wait, talked to you about budget things last yes. time. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you wanted to go over the budget requests or, um, you know, just let me know. Um, yeah, the one, um, I don't know, it wasn't, I don't think it was for you. I don't think the, my big question for the budget was for, for you anyway. Okay. I think, um, um so I think, cause you gave, you gave good answers. I got your emails. You wrote, you know, you responded to the office from each one of like, you know, what different things covered or didn't cover. Yes, I, I think you guys have all the information you need. Um, I know the crone infiltration plant cells were on there. Um, and we've specified before that the maintenance of the wet cells is assigned with the parks department. Um, mm -hmm. uh, catch basin maintenance, we inspect and clean all catch basins. Um, we also do additional cleanings. Uh, Definitely, please call them into three one one when you feel they need uh, additional maintenance. Um, Tibbetts Brook Day Lighting Project. We were just at your community board, and we we did a presentation on that on the progress of that project. Uh, we have stakeholder meetings uh, that meet regularly. Um, Jerome Park Reservoir Public Access. Um, Obviously, we're, we're not accommodating full public access at JPR. I don't have anything new on that. The Spide and Dival waterfront, 
I'm not sure if you have something specific on on that, um, or or. Does anyone something? know what that refers to? Okay, yeah, thank I you. Think I know what that is. So the in the Spiten Dival um, Shorefront Park, um, there's a. Wait, this is the mitigating CSO. Number thirteen. Yeah. So there's a, a CSO outfall that's right next to the Metro North Station. Right. And there's um. The, I think what the, this ask is is to um, improve the shoreline uh, along that, and, and, and uh, so that the um, so that there's more of a, a more of green infrastructure um, adjacent to the to kind of soften the, um, the riverbed and uh, uh, kind of it's all it's basically rock with the CSO outfall, and I think that the idea was to make, make it more of a living shoreline in this request. So it's a dream request. We would love you to spend money to build a better green shoreline right there by the CSO. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, well, within Spike and Dival the Shorefront Park, there's, um, there's some work being done on the, on, the, on the pond. I know that that's happening. But I think that that's already an active project. And I think that's the DEC project, right? Hey, Bob. Um, Bob, you want to go ahead? Yes, I guess so. I, I wasn't sure what the request was for the spite and dive waterfront. Although now that you're mentioning it, it sounds familiar. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think it's the yeah, whole way from spite and dive We've spoken to about it, haven't we? We've what? spoken about it, haven't we? Yes. Not me, but Cody, probably in the committee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we discussed it before. Hello, Effie. Hi, good evening. I'm having so many issues with my laptop. I'm very annoyed. Here, uh, I'm calling from my phone. I can't pull up any of my information, so sorry about that. I'm, I'm having challenges. <laughs> um, okay, uh, if you want, if you want to send me a blurb on the Spide and Dival waterfront, just so I can send, you know, an agency response on it you know, officially, please, please email that to me. I, I would like that. Thank you. And, um, go ahead. About, uh, the, the evaluated street segment or intersection for green infrastructure, particularly right. like up the hill. Is that still, about... sorry, I yeah. didn't hear. Oh yeah, no, sorry. It seems like it's breaking up. It's uh, priority seven under expense DEP. Evaluate a street segment or intersection for green infrastructure, i.e., or e.g., rain garden, stormwater, green streets, um, feasibility planning. Um, because there's so much runoff um, from uh, the top of the reservoir down, basically Van Cortlandt Park West, um, down to Bailey, down to Deegan. And Broadway. And then down to Broadway. Yeah. So, Effie, this is part of a long-standing debate about depth required for um, GI. As you know, um, we hope for a shallower depth than um, the six feet. And so what we wanted to do was to get some technical studies because um, we actually do have a plan for installations. Um, it was created with the Soil and Water District and BCQ and it's called the Hilltop Plan, and there actually are um, planned sites, and they're, um, they're designed to interrupt the water before it, it meets the speedway, which leads down to the highway. So um, that's where this comes from. And uh, we just don't, we are putting a, a GI, um, DEP is putting GI on the corner of Mashalu and their own property. You're familiar? Right, the, yes. The, yeah. That's what John so, McLaughlin, and I think, I just right. spoke yeah. so about we, it. Right. We, we would like to continue right. that technical exploration of appropriate sites that serve the same function and met the same depth requirement for you there. Understood. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have any specific locations okay. at the moment. Um, and every year I provide the community board with a map of all their upcoming capital improvement projects and which include green infrastructure, so forth. I've shared that with the board. Um, if you want me to resend that, I can resend it to you. Every year 
we provide one um, and you can look at it. Yeah, but since this is expense, we're actually looking for some technical commitment to um, boots on the ground, so to speak, to studies of appropriate. We actually have the areas. We, we would point you to. We've, been, we've had maps created by uh, Paul Mankiewicz's uh, firm for this. Actually, his daughter, Phoebe, did it, who's now in it. Bio, uh, a hydrologist at uh, Yale, so it's not too shabby. And um, so we actually have the high flow areas that we think would be great. So it's just a matter of the expense, and then from there we can talk about capital. The expense for the technical expertise, I think that's what we want. I will send Effie a copy of the Hilltop Plan, Bob. Yeah, Thank right, you. and also the high, Phoebe's uh, quadrants, the high flow quadrants. Well, I don't know. I, let me see if I can find it. Have you shared I have, the I have them. Yeah, okay. Send them I don't have any of those. I, I will send it to okay. you. Yeah, it's called the Hilltop Plan. It actually creates a map for green space. I have space. it in white copy. Oh, my God. That's great. Okay. Have you I shared have. them with anybody else at DEP? I'm sure I think we shared it with John. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. and what was what did he say about it? You know, I mean, that's why we got that one little thing. It's sort of like a right. model, the thing up at right. the top. We took right. the, the highest one. Okay. And so that's yeah, how that's we got that. Concept, that that's proof of concept. Over and, there, and then, and then um, th some of these are not, they're not city property, they're private property. So maybe, you know, there's, there's more stuff going on now that might interest them. Yeah, please send it over to me, Karen. And, yes. and I'll speak to John about it too, but... Um, let me know because he works in that unit the green infrastructure BIPA unit so um right. they can give me some more information on that yeah. yes you that's good. send what you said about uh the capital, capital projects. projects um that would be great if you could resend yeah. that so that's the map. in other words they're all of our requests were expense for her for them i mean that's just good for us to have mm -hmm. yeah. Having that yeah. no that's yeah. great exactly yeah that's the map that we sent yeah. during budget consultation time. So uh, we we coordinated with DDC and the DOT projects. I think are also on there, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll definitely. Or it might have been in that packet. It might have been in that in a packet. That's okay. I'll resend them. I have them yeah. via. Email. I just can't that. do it right now. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks. I think I got one question for a potential add-on. Mm -hmm. um, well, thanks. We should take some of these off anyway. Uh, so, I see on, in front of Wave Hill, um, on Independence Avenue, there are kind of there's a um, the, the side of the road is a, a, for like a lack of a better word a swale um, that's collapsed. The water the runoff from Independence Avenue in front of Wave Hill has kind of worn away all of the the side of the road. Um, we know that it's a park property because it, it, we know the park owns until nine feet into the center of Independence Ave. Um, but we're trying to figure out whose budget priority that is to address the, um, the water runoff on the road um, adjacent to a park. Leading down to the it's Riverdale leading, Park leading uh, station with the parking lot. All the way down to um, uh, Riverdale Park. Eventually, um, okay. Avenue is not private. It's public street, and then it makes that turn, and it's still it's still public. Yeah. I don't think it's a public street. It, it is. I think it's that a private is, street. It's a private street. It's not. It's not a private street, Karen. It's no, it's part. it's not Fieldston. It's, it's, no, it's, it's the other side. Down so by there's, there's, Riverdale. Some there's, of that. There's a lot of private streets, so un, unbuilt streets. But not or, independent. Some, but not independent. It's not right there in front of Wave Hill. One side of that street is Riverdale Country School, right? Am yeah. I in the right place or no? Well, uh, the, you have to go around the dog leg, so you're yeah. actually in the front of, of Wave Hill. That's oh. where the worst of it is, and then oh. it gets bad again going down. Really by, real. And then runs in front of Riverdale Country's edge. Yeah, it's right. It's a trench now, yeah. Some work was but done. But there used to be actually. some... Right, I thought they put like there used to be a little gutter. Yeah, there's like a little gutter, but it's washed out. Part of oh, it was rebuilt a few years ago. Is that along the sidewalk so that what happened, happened what, touched what, with the uh, pumping station? No. What? No. No, no. We're, we're up the hill still. They're a oh, mile yeah. apart. Yeah, I know. 
it's a straight run. Um, Effie, what happens when there is a, um, a, it's basically a rain gutter in a DOT, it is independent? Right, it's right there on the map, under the one. Um, and there's a rain gutter. Deb was asking about, um, how, and the water is causing hazard, right? Right. We're talking about along there, yeah. When you um, say rain gutter, you mean a catch basin? Is that what you're talking about? Cobble. No, there was like a cobblestone gutter on the side yeah. that was just like, you know, like a Roman gutter. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly well, like a Roman gutter. Can yeah. somebody send me a photo of that? Yeah, it's point. We will. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah you I don't so know. Much. I don't know of that. I, I don't know. I would have to look at that. No, and I, I haven't been there since it looked better, I guess. I should look at it now. I should go back over and see if they've done anything right. since. But when I last that time, doesn't I sound it. like it's part of our infrastructure. I don't think, yeah, I don't think so. It would the question is also who, who built the swill the first time, then? Roman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that the be hell? The problem everywhere there is that the, there's always a dispute about public and private and the owners yeah. of, the, because the, 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 um, the roads actually go underneath a lot of times, the road bed. Right. It's not entirely. And some of, the, some of the road bed that is unbuilt street is still, is built as far as pathway and even Perhaps in formerly cases. So. Okay, but I can send pictures or whatever is helpful to move it along just to understand we should have the project capital priorities that should be. Well, right, if you're saying it might be parks or, or not it's transportation, it's, oh, it's definitely not DOT because uh, DEP controls water on the water uh, on the roadway. So if it was DOT property, right, Effie? It, that, that would definitely be a DEP jurisdiction, but because it's park, um, that's where I don't know. I'm not sure. That's why if you could send me a photo and the exact location, we'll find out. We'll, we'll figure it out. I can always confirm with DOT what, what's going on there, too. Okay. Um, quick question. With respect to catch basins, um, is the, I think I'm calling it the right term. There's a catch basin at the bottom of the train station, which often gets quite deep. It backs up probably because it's the only, <laughs> the only place for the water to go and the grates get clogged. Is that uh, under your jurisdiction or is that Metro North's property? Uh, this is the Riverdale station, sorry. Yeah, I I know the catch basins obviously on city streets are DEP's property. Um, now you will have you know um, little paths and roads that lead that are part of, of somebody else's property. Um, Metro North, uh, MTA, they have their own properties with drains on them, just like private property owners can have their drains on them. If I don't know the specific location, I, I'm not too sure. Um, we've cleaned out drains that were near MTA property or Metro North property, but I'm not sure for that specific one, uh, whose responsibility this is right in front of the, it's right in front of where passengers sort of, you know, get into buses and cars. It's right there where the hillside comes down okay. and all the hills kind of lead there. Excuse me, Anne, is it a series like of a couple? No. I think it's just one. one. <laughs> Bob, do you remember? Rob, do you remember we took pictures? Yes, of the I remember just at the bottom the of the hill that goes to the yacht club. Right, I remember that one. But I, I, I think another that's issue. A, but yeah. you should take a picture of it. There's like six of them, and yeah, we got no and DEP cleaned it for us. Okay, so this, this is something one else. big one at the vortex, <laughs> okay. right in front of where passengers disembark, where the buses. Pick people up. Oh, we lost her. No problem. I'm going to look into it. If you could just kindly send me the location and um, we'll take you know, a picture of it. Some, take yeah, a picture absolutely. of it so it has the location in it. Yeah. Greens <laughs> every other day. Yeah. <laughs> send RD a picture. RD. So I think that's it for the DP ones, because then, right, the other thing is the... So, um, and if you don't mind, I just wanted to check in with the maintenance um, cash basin inspection. And um, 
Steve, have you noticed any trouble spots in this district that you're getting calls for catch bait? Because historically there's been a couple underneath Manhattan College Parkway, um, you know, that catch basin over there. And then, um, do you remember that huge lake at the Metro North Riverdale Station? That's what I was just talking about. Oh, you were looking at yeah. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. So that was the high curve. That was the high curve. Um, all right. I so have to look. I, I have to look back at my emails to, on that. That's what we were just talking. I've been through that. So we're we're going to follow up on that. My emails Sorry, because oh. we were we were involved um, with that, but I just want to make sure was it our property or was it MTA's property and we were assisting. So I just want to clarify that and I'll let you know. We, we went through this once because somebody actually um, drove into that thinking, mm -hmm. looking at the curb because it's like a, a two foot high curb there. And they mm -hmm. thought because the water went up halfway, they thought it was, oh, it's like a little puddle. They actually they never came ruined out. their car. Mm -hmm. They lost their whole car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we've had that on our radar for a long time. So it just needs to be clean. I don't know um, if there's any, but definitely an inspection is in order. It's not a budget issue. Mm. Well, they have people do that. It's just a matter of adding it onto their list. Yes, it's like a DM issue. So, Steve, have you seen that recently? Yeah, that's why he was asking. It, it, it used to be worse. I think there yeah. was some cleaning done, but I think since there's only one place, yeah. It's it may be an intractable thing unless you create another. Yeah. Oh, it could be. Yeah. Is there an outfall right there? It's not near the sidewalk. No, no, the, the, at Riverdale Station. I thought that there was a TSO That's a good outfall there. Is there? Oh, five six. That's an outfall. I know there's a Broadway one. There's one at the bottom, Spike and Dival. Right, this one's about a spike dive, and I thought there was one that was kind of roughly around the train station area. Yeah. But that would cause it to get more backed up because there's flow. Okay. Probably a map of those. Yeah. Definitely a map of that. So I think that's all for you, Effie. Thank you. Right? Effie, have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. All right. So we're going to go back to item number one, recognition of quorum, which we now have. Thank you. Thanks to two more people appearing after we started. Um, so we do, because we have five. five. We only need whatever six. Yeah. Or no, we only need four. Yeah. Really happy Steve is with us. So thank you. Well, because well, yeah, Steve, is, we needed Steve to be here, because next time you won't count anymore. <laughs> So thank you for thank you for counting today, and um, Barbara's going to figure out if I need to like nominate you or something. What the procedure is for that, since you were already on the committee. But I nominate you to be a committee member, a community member. I guess the question was if you have to attend three times as a community member, or if you've already but you've already attended. So for the sages, yeah. So we don't know the real answer to that one. <laughs> by June, then I'm a <laughs> or it could be you're already guessing. Yeah, she was going to look. Could but either way. Is to advocate if you wouldn't mind for people to um, grandfather. Because at one point there was a rule that um, made the clock start over for community members. Yeah, I kind of feel like it just got interpreted away. Well, that, that was a Dan innovation. It, it, it ends in June, and then people are re. Uh, you know, be nominated. Right, but it's the question about whether they have to go through the thing about the three meetings before no. they can vote. No, no, it doesn't no, no, make no, sense doesn't make if they're continuous. Did, did no, no, no. They created, I think Marty annulled, just got asked this question. Yeah, annulled the three months for all time, so you have to start from scratch. So everyone, you wipe the slate clean. No, no, yes. no, but that's not the way we've been doing it for years. That's what I want to know, okay. Uh, and, and it just says that your term ends in June, but if you're renominated and your attendance has been good and all that, and, you're, and it's the same thing. The committee That's chair and the chair of the board. The former chair says. Bylaws don't get that specific, so right. it's a, a matter of interpretation. Right. And it actually would be nice if there was like an actual process or like 
I just not a problem. I, I, we have enough processes. But then, <laughs> but then like, if, if we actually just in September actually said we're reappointing X, Y, Z as community members, I feel like all the people keep going. Those people, no, no, no. The people, um, yeah, the committee chair has to approve that, or they don't go on the list in September. There's, there's, you know, the committee list that happens in September. Um, there this community committee members for the previous year. Not new people, but if, if they yeah, don't that's, that's wait again, they, they roll. They roll right they onto do. the list. But yeah. they, maybe somebody should ask. If they should first. Camelia oh. is raising her hand. I don't know. Or I don't, we don't need more process. Uh, hello. Uh, may I speak? Hi. Hi. How are oh, you? hi. How are you doing? Hello. My, uh, my name is Camelia Tepero. Daniel, just to say hello, I'm the former chair of, of ENS last year. But uh, backing up, Laura, on this in the sense of uh, at least how it happened last year was actually that the people that were interested in being commun community committee members actually approached us uh, early September, if not already late August, saying, I'm interested to continue. It was uh, Karen and, and uh, uh, Bob Spalter. And uh, upon agreement between the community board chair at the time, Laura and myself, they, they kind of got wrapped in. So there was no question of, of uh, attendance or nothing of the exactly. sort, because obviously the year starts in in September. Uh, now, having said so, this was my understanding with Laura, as it has been done in many years uh, before. Having said that, um, how to say? Yeah. Uh, having said that, uh, I was also inquiring earlier on when when Robert uh, Fanuzi was the interim acting. Kind of what's the process? Um, not that I'm considering it right now, but I was considering back then. Uh, and I think this is worth clarifying at the level of the board, but because it doesn't make sense how to say, if you require attendance, which you could, right? If you decide that way, September, October, November, that person only becomes technically and formally committee member only in December. And there are a lot of Correct. things that get accumulated in September following the summer. So maybe that input is in fact valuable. So I would um, ask you to consider the sort of Laura version of the process, meaning people with sort of a history and a background and an involvement um, to be considered already in, in September. So just wanted to add this. We do in my case, I think for you too, in the same way, it's like you've attended three meetings. I think that you know what you want to see commitment and you want to see three in a row and that that's that's fine. And you've done that. The new people. <laughs> right. The new people. Right. Exactly. Uh, really, because it doesn't specifically say three in a row as a community member. If it's of assistance, it can be added without much trouble to whatever that procedures manual is inside the office, which is not a voted on thing. Yeah. And I can Just talk. To I can it. talk to Marty. If it needs clarification. Yeah, I don't know what the exact wording is. I mean, I go look in the binder. I just don't get that specific, so that's why. Yeah. But that's, yeah. good. that's good. You don't want the binder. Okay, perfect. So, next thing is we'd like to approve minutes from January 17th and February 21st with an addition of um, just bringing up a comment that um, Jody brought up last time about expense item number 17 about composting. Um, which they didn't really answer, which was the, um, we were asking for was the increase, the, um, the outreach, the education, the community composting, and they were like, well, we're doing the curbside composting, which is also wonderful, but is different. So I just added that into the agenda, which was just not in the other version. But other than that, did we approve both minutes or have any comments on either minutes? Okay, what you're talking about is in addition to the minutes? Yeah. Okay, that's the issue. In addition to the minutes. I move we approve the minutes. I'll second. As a member. As a member. As a member. Yeah, that's all that I can. Make sure to, um, okay. Any opposition? Any abstentions? So unanimous, both minutes. Thank you. That is the one thing we needed a quorum for. Um, done. Chair's report, which is I'm going to tell you all the sanitation things that they told us instead of, because um, they're not here. Sanitation could not meet today, so we don't have a direct line. Um, new containerization rules, which are just, I don't know why people were asking about this, but basically now, effective, I think already, um, businesses have to put their trash out in locked containers. They cannot put 
bags on the curb. They already pay for private carters, which we'll get to. Um, they are also expanding, right, curbside composting. So basically from October 6th, our composting in District 8 will switch to recycling day. Across the entire Bronx, there will then be brown bin curbside pickup on your recycling day from now on, starting in the Bronx and then expanding borough by borough, borough as they go. But we've already enjoyed this on our Tuesdays, I guess. At least by me. Different days, different places, I think. Oh, is it, is it even within Riverdale? Like, yeah. for me. Oh, funny. But when's your recycling then, I guess? Thursday. Oh. So, right, so it's going to... Thursday it's gonna, night into... So it's going to switch to aligning with recycling. Right. right. It'll be trash recycling and compost day. Right. Plus all the other days when you have other trash days, I guess. Free. <laughs> Um, that's a really good question. But I don't believe so, and I imagine that DOE has their own. Yeah, they usually do. Most schools have like a dumpster somewhere. Have you seen the new? Because uh, I've never seen trash outside of school. Does everyone know There's what trash outside the, the charter school next to Brooklyn Park. Well, charter schools probably are considered a business because they're, they're not right. directly. I mean, they're. They fall under DOE for certain things, but they are like their own. I bet. I wonder. That's so a very good question. Charter schools need to yeah. follow these rules because we've got a lot of trash accumulating in front of Russ Park from the charter school. New charter school mm -hmm. I don't know if that's because they don't have their container or if they're not required. To no, that's a good question for them. I'll ask them. Okay. We'll ask our contact there. This is for um, multi-family or single family. Well, the containerization is yeah. just businesses right now. Just businesses. So Whatever counts as business. To, they're going to come to multifamily. Yes, that's later. That's in a couple years. That's it's on the schedule. First with businesses. Right. Next, I think for us it'll be they'll make us put them in containers, and then the step after that is specific containers. Once they have a contract for those specific containers and the new side dumping, picking up garbage trucks that they don't own yet. Yeah. So that's like 2026 plus. That eventually they're going to mandate. They're going to mandate like New York City trash cans for everybody for that. The, the New York Times actually has a really good uh, graphic. Did you see that? Yeah, there's a really good article that actually explains how the streets will look with the different container and it's wonderful. I think it's great. And even already, I feel like the businesses, like along Broadway, like that because they have to put everything in the bins. Then there are bins right there on the street. So then when the guys sweep, they just put it right there. Like it's like it ends up making everything cleaner even just between pickups, like in the middle of the day. Because before they would just start collecting trash bags, I mean, even if they weren't supposed to, whenever, they would just start piling up, you know, against the building, which isn't at the curb, but, you know, now it's in a container. And isn't that nicer? So, right, so that's great. They'll have to do that. Um, we're all going to get compost. Everyone already has compost here, so that's kind of... The only thing was the confusion about the date. But seemingly, yeah, after October 6th, the date will switch. And maybe we'll start getting text messages on a different day. I don't know. <laughs> um, and the last one, which is the waste zones. The other improvement that the sanitation department is um, implementing in the Bronx first is um, commercial waste zones. So right now, businesses can contract with basically any company they want of the, the service New York City to pick up their trash. But all businesses have to pay for their own trash pickup. They're not picked up by the city like our trash. So now our whole area, this whole yellow area here, will be serviced by only three preferred carters that they're allowed to use, which should hopefully limit the number of garbage trucks everywhere, which reduces emissions and noise. Theory is the hope. Now, the fact that they're still limiting it to three means you're still going to have three, you could still have three garbage trucks coming to one block, stupidly. So I kind of, I feel like it's not enough, but it maybe is better. So, okay, better. Better is good. So it's, it's better. Well, because I thought it was, and then they corrected me on it, and it seems to be. It started out that way, but there was so much hysteria about it. Well, one is kind of a, a problem. Well, like I said, it was just a monopoly, and it was it, it was a lot of issues. It was a lot of a lot of issues. But I think 
Yeah. Also, it's like finding out like who you have in school, in elementary school, yeah, and you yeah. get stuck with one, <laughs> one person in the whole room. No accountability whatsoever. <laughs> so I know we've gotten the, we, the board had gotten complaints about trash collection like around here, I guess, that come really late at night. But it's unfortunately none of that is changing. Commercial trash is picked up at night, overnight. It's like. 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. or something, and you have to pay extra to do daytime commercial trash pickups. Public pickup is. Well, all trash right. is now like that. Well, I know. So it's sort of sorry. So, like, I slightly sympathize, but also like. Well, New York City, they switch. Some, some, sometimes you're going to be nights, and other times you're going to be day. Oh, it's hard to do. Well, that's why you have to put your trash out by midnight, and right. I've seen them come at like one in the morning, right. and I've seen them come at like 6 p.m. the next day. Exactly. So it depends on their route and that day and what other things they, how many, how many things they had to pick up somewhere. Yeah, it's quick. They dump, they go on. I mean, I, I'm rather that than trash collecting on the street. And they take everything, shopping carts, like whatever. I saw them just pick up a shopping cart, put it vertically, and then the machine and it crushed it and pieces like flew. They just, it just cried. They didn't even blink. They just like threw it right in there. <laughs> so that's that. That was what that is on the ice items. Okay, next, we did DP, next. Old business, back to budget stuff. So, um, well, so of the budget things, right, um, we need a better blurb about what you mean about the CSO overfall this, between the two stations. First one, a priority 13. Um, I don't know who knows anything about that. So, so mitigate CSO outflows from between, like the Spite and Dival and Marble Hill um, Metro North stations. Is there another one of these? So, um, so this was okay. the one that uh, Effie was just saying. Right. She didn't really understand what it was. I feel like the question here is the word mitigation. Maybe we need to um, have more like. Um, uh, is the, is the, what is this it, was a what capital is budget request. This is the only capital budget request. Yeah, and what is it trying to mitigate, right? It's like, um, well, it's mitigating the outflow effect on the water, I guess. That's what I'm saying. What is it mitigating? Well, I didn't write it, so yeah. I know that. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I will. I will give Can you write a blurb or something? It's going to be building a living shoreline. Right. At this so maybe it's not about mitigating. It's yeah. like we build, just say what we want. Exactly. Let's flip that. Flip. So that's like the first sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Building that for in order to mitigate, you know. Yeah. So it's a capital project to build. So we're begging them to do it, right? Perfect. Yeah. And an apple. So the three word that, and I think that's a good one to keep. Okay. Would you like me to? Yeah. Can you please? Thank you. Um, capital still, right? So. Um, um, that's the only capital. The rest are all expense, actually. So, are the, well, this is oh, the, I only have the, this is only the DEP ones. I don't have, there were sanitation ones, too, okay. somewhere. So I would, yeah, I would call this a feasibility study. Uh, I would basically say this is focused around Hilltop. Well, and which thing? The second one, seven? For the expense? The expense, yeah. yeah. And um, we, we do have interest in, remember, in GI along daily. Um, right, which it mentions that here. But yeah, it's all kind of combined. We can Bailey, break them Broadway. Up. I think it's okay. Well, I, think, I, I, think I, would, I wouldn't break them up because we're only going to be, we're going to be very constrained on the number of expense and budget priorities. So okay, good point. Yeah. Right. So I think leaving it, I think this makes sense because it's, as you say, it's like even if they only approve one corner one year then you, the next corner the next year, it doesn't have to be all at once. Okay. So I any yeah. mitigation is good. Just to get their attention, right? So well, once you right. get them paying attention, they'll, they'll pick their corners. I, I know why we were saying Major Deacon Carter because we were fascinated by the, the, the oh. collateral, yeah, the flooding, but also the impact on daylighting to make that work. Right. But now the daylighting is happening, which is slightly helping this. Yeah, and also there are um, the there, there are also uh, greenway plans now along Bailey. Um, so I feel like we should be looking at the, the, the hilltop. Let's take this out. Take out a long Major Deegan like the, Expressway the, corridor. Like Cortland, Park, Cortland Avenue West going down. It's like you see the streams of water yeah. pouring Absolutely. down that yes. particular. I, I think we want to focus this on the heights. Okay, because 
because we've actually documented. Karen, remember that um, the summit we had with DEP? Uh, Karen has a ton of document of the Van Cortlandt East runoff, so we want to make that a priority uh, for a feasibility study of GI. Um, but it is Park's property, remember? No, we're, we're, uh, no, it's not Park's East. property. No, it's huh? um, it's a it's a street right it's away. Okay, I, I just don't want him to punt it, so we have to phrase it properly. She's talking about she's talking about going down the hill of Van Cortlandt yeah. Avenue yeah. West, whatever it's called. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. and the, the I think it's interesting about that too is the the you know you've got they're they're doing work at the Bailey intersection too of Van Cortlandt Park. Yeah. So there is this opportunity to divert water into the park even at that yeah. you know at the end of Van Cortlandt Park West. No, you can't divert water onto a park. That's like throwing your garbage in your neighbor's yard. It's not uh, proper. Can't do it. No, you can't do that. But you, what you could do is you could capture the water as you in small places as you go down the hill. If they are going to be doing work, that's where the Jerome Park Reservoir connector is, that they're going to be doing work under that street. So even if they made that connector somehow mm. green infrastructure into Tibet, yeah. um, that would be... That might be something they could. John will like that. <laughs> let's let's work on that one. Okay. And can we get back to you on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please do exactly. Oh, okay. Stephen, you raised your hand. Yeah. Um, did huh? you guys say that this was a um, an expense item? Yeah. Did you get confirmation that it's less than thirty-five thousand? Because I gotta believe that these are each probably in that range. Well, they're feasibility studies, David. Uh, okay, I did not hear that part. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's why it's an expense. It's just we're asking them to study. No, no, that's how fine. To do I that. just didn't hear the feasibility study part of it. That that makes more sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and just so you know, David, um, that one that one green infrastructure that they're doing at the top of the hill is like I think it's like two hundred thousand. Yeah, that, that's How why. That's why I thought thirty-five k. Uh, Two hundred thousand for green infrastructure. Would have been light, yeah. but now I understand the what you're aiming for. Um, right. The next one, the Jerome Park Public Access. I, I mean, there's no reason I mean, we can keep asking for it. Yeah, we should sort of keep But it, of course, they're still working on it, so obviously they're not going to do it tomorrow. But there's no reason not to ask for it. I think that's fine. I think that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And they, they were almost open to the, when we, someone was talking to them about Open House New York, they were kind of like, well, maybe we could do something like that. Because, right, in the future, when they're done, well, wouldn't that be nice? I said before that it's really not a fiscal ask. It's a policy change. Um, if you want to keep it there, that's okay. We just want to make sure that we they pay attention to increased maintenance. Right. And is that still an issue? It's been much better. Okay. But, yeah. I think I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask, keep asking for it then in that case. We've had a lot of uh, trash cans around the reservoir. We still have a lot of dumping. Um, you know, that's mostly local folks. It's a combination of local folks and there's uh, people who are living along Golden, you know, in, in RVs. And, um, I mean, I don't know if they're specifically dumping, but there's a, a lot of trucks and uh, semi park uh, trailers and all that semis stuff. Semis have there. made that their home. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there a legal, is there more trash there? And that's not DEP either. <coughs> but at that point, that's not the city. Uh, right, sanitation. Yeah, just remember that, okay. Um, are, do you think we should increase or maintain funding for maintenance contracts? Uh, I think so we that, should maintain. Okay. Let's just change that, yeah, that's a good idea. This is for within the property of all the contractors they use, and uh, we, we had to attack that a few times. The car washing, I don't know if that will come back. Um, it's around the neighborhood, but it's not. So what is the next right 28? What is that even asking for? I mean, they're doing the daylighting. That's the maintenance of it. So that was, this was the expense of the, uh, uh, this was to keep the um, the waterway itself clear. I think of what we expect would be trash, um, and I assume there may also be just some general maintenance of the living 
aspects of the waterway, no? Yeah, uh, we need to keep it. Just Leaves, all that. It doesn't have to be new. It just has to. Yeah, be that's fine. You have to know yeah. that we need it there. Right, then you can and introduce it and start planning for it. Right. She's, she's telling us that she's on it, so that's great. Do we not need it as a budget priority? We do. Okay. The question is on the last, the one, not the last one, but the last one on the page there, which is the maintain funding for catch basin inspection. And their response, of course, is we do catch basin right, tell us, tell inspection. Us tell us about it. So. Should we, we should we keep this on here? We may not need that. I would drop it. I feel like, I feel like one, one. we do it and we tell people to do through and one, and I we will all call through and one. Yeah, and they come and do it. Yeah. They do. So yeah. So there's no reason to keep bothering them about it. Back when there was all the flooding, remember they said that they were going to be doing like kind of flood watch sensors and things like that. Coming soon. But they weren't going to do it in our neighborhood because we didn't have enough three one one. Is that coming now to yeah, our They're expanding yeah. that pilot? They're coming to the DCQ annual meeting to talk about where to place it. So do we need to put that, to highlight that as a... Flood net. Yeah, flood net. Said, the, yeah. The expansion, <coughs> implementation, and then same with, with, we should drop also the Croton filtration plant cells, provide maintenance program for the cells managing excess groundwater, yeah, exactly. because that's, that's, they say that that's actually parks that's department. Parks. So mm -hmm. the parks committee well, needs parks to request it. it. Like parks is not... So I think parks, I think we should drop it and parks should maybe, if they want, the should take it up. The, concession, I, the concessionaire for the Mashaloo um, uh, golf course is going, uh, hopefully will come. The concessions unit and DDC are going to come to the April Parks Committee meeting so we can ask them about these things. Wait, and then hopefully they will have picked the concessionaire and that part of that concession contract seems to be the maintenance of these cells. So we'll, hopefully we can ask them at that time what the plan is. So I, I was there for this, and they presented it as a park function, mm -hmm. okay, when it was uh, Grimshaw that was the architect. They presented it at the Croton uh, Monitoring Committee. It turns out it's a function of the... Concession. Uh, no, concession, a function of the plant. Right. It's displacing water. Right. Well, the water itself is a, is a byproduct of the plan, but yeah. the maintaining of the cells, they've tr tried to push onto the concession. I'm aware, yeah. We've yeah. been trying to get an MOU between them. We mm -hmm. remember that Paul suggested this could be a CSO reduction, if that's turned into gray water, okay, for the use on the uh, golf course oh, and right. other areas. Mm -hmm. So um, I do not want to relinquish DEP responsibility for this. And um, maybe we refine that so that um, if Parks is going to use it to maintain there, a concession is not going. A concessionaire is not going to be equipped to deal with irrigation and gray water. I really well, think. But, and it could but help the concession, you. but the concessionaire is going to take care of the golf course also. That's part of the concession. Right. I know. But I'm and saying. So, and, and, concession to use it as a gray water. Um, yeah. Yeah, water? they could use it as gray water. But would they hire somebody the to do that. that oh, they are, they're building the sprinkler system. Part of the concession agreement was that they were to come back with what the plan was going to be, what the layout was for all of the holes and all of the like water maintenance care, all that stuff is to be built, like finalized. So all right. now well, that makes Karen, sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So we don't have that MOU. We wanted a formal MOU because we didn't want to let DEP off the hook for the water management, but if that's included in the concession contract. So what tool we'll see when we see this concession agreement. And do you so, know when we're going to see that? Um, they said that they're getting close. So hopefully that the concessionaire will be able to come in April, and then once we, we have a concessionaire, we have a concession agreement we can look at. Is the concession, by that you refer to the entire golf course management, like in Van Cortlandt, yes. or yes. just that yes. house? Yes, the mm -hmm. whole thing. No, uh, the whole thing. Field. Right. Yeah, so the golf course, they got to do everything. Karen, this yes. means that, that we're, makes we're not a lot of sense. convince DEP to treat this as CSO mm -hmm. They, they, must, have made, they must, must have made a deal with the, they can make a deal with the, the, deal with the, the Parks Department, department, the parks department well, and still that. plan well, exactly, that's why you have to make them do it. Yeah, because we, we wanted to use this, um, their management of the, um, the basically wastewater from the, the plant to uh, offset their CSOs. They right. still could do that. They don't have to be the. They don't have to be. It doesn't have to be on their property. They could, the parks department does it at other places. Okay, so it doesn't preclude that. Right. 
Okay, all right. Thank you. All right, I don't think this should be in here either. All right, so thanks, thanks for that discussion. Is there any follow-up on the park plan with that? Really, the grade, the use of the water. Um, how how can it be used to maintain the parks without um, using uh, recycled water? Right. Because um, does that mean that I should consider inviting the E to the? So right now, it's DDC and Parks concessions, so those two who are coming. Um, we, we, we should ask DEP what they think about the idea of recycling because they may have a policy or engineering expertise that they want to contribute somehow. You want to take on asking the, 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 the water cells? Or yeah. I'm, not the, I'm sorry, not the wet cells, the, um, the oh, reuse gray water. of the gray water coming out of the I mean, that's the been the a goal of DEP for since the 90s. Exactly, yeah. So tell them that we would like to see the cells that are um, repositories of the excess groundwater from the upper plant. We want to see that used for parts of uh, irrigation. I'd like to know how much water we're talking about. Probably a lot of water. Uh-huh. Isn't that a lot? I thought it was a lot of water. Yeah. Yes, I agree. A lot of water. Okay. A lot of water is displaced. A lot of yeah. water is displaced. <laughs> this is because of maintaining the golf course as a water intensive experience? Yeah, saying? but also because of the groundwater. Oh, okay. There's so much groundwater, they've got to I pump see. it up. And the community said, please don't dig, you know, 100 feet down because there's a high water table there. And, and, they, the can't, and they can't. <laughs> they couldn't go down enough to bury the, 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 golf, course. the golf course. Right. And then, the so next to the... And now this is now you don't have it. This is on in the. So we're taking away thirty. That's going to go. And twenty nine. Oh, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. And that's also the concession agreement. I believe has the sewer connection for the other. Thank you. Then we have sanitation ones that's attached to the minutes that I printed. Um, I don't know if you have that. If there's another, I guess you do. But um. Carol, the one thing we should you're very quiet. Carol? Yes. Yeah. Do you guys have it? Do you I, have we it? Just, I have that. I have that. Give it to someone who's more sophisticated. Let's share. First one, provide new and existing sanitation garages and other infrastructure. I mean, some of these things just leave them on there. We've been asking for this apparently for years, I'm sure. The garage, the sanitation garage Isn't that done? is done. Well, could they said, we support this, but due to fiscal constraints, availability of funds is uncertain. But you think this is something that happened? Why didn't, wouldn't they just say that then? Yeah. yeah. Didn't the garage just close today? It Wasn't there a hole in the ground? Yes. They, we, had, we had it for years, and then it was No, no, done, no, today, just today. Today, it was, today, it was a big done. news story so, that a truck, yeah. a bus right. went through. Yeah, today they closed the they closed the whole station in Kingsbridge. At at two at two eighteen. Yes, because a, a the bus went into a hole or something. And the guy looked down and he could see the the floor below him, so they evacuated. You no, know they're gonna they're gonna they have to fix it if that's feasible. The community board on the other side of the road. Yeah, we did it for them where because we they get service. Our, before we get they yeah. service us. We, we did that for them. Well, it's surrounded by an enormous amount of development right there. Yeah. Um, so, so why was this two different requests, though? Right. Newer existing and then rehabilitate. But they both say rehabilitate. They both say the same thing. Uh, as long as it has the same ranking, does it have the same number? Yeah. Different. No, they have different numbers. One doesn't have a number, right? Yeah. Yeah, what is that? I don't know, but the first thing to know is whether there's any need. They're both they're both identical, so I think yeah. Compost project expansion. That we keep because that is the compost education community based composting sites yep. Yep. request. Yeah. That stays. Um, clean streets stays for sure. Um, vacant lot cleaning stays, but priority thirty seven uh, towards the bottom, which is universal organics pickup, is funded. That is happening. So we're going to delete that. But I can definitely keep the e-cycling program in because, right, that um, would be nice. There's no they way. There's they don't no. Do they don't do it anymore, and it's really hard to recycle electronics. That was something I really wanted to stress. So thank you. Yeah. 
Well, then it's dangerous. Uh, yeah, because otherwise people just throw them out. They just leave it, you know, you're not supposed well, to. All the lithium batteries are fire hazards. So that just caused the fire in Marble Hill last yeah. week. But, I mean, the recycling is a nightmare. Like, people are not recycling. No, they put those you can you can take them to Best Buy or Staples, but people don't. Right. Well, you can't take everything back. No, but battery lithium ion rechargeable batteries you can. Not all not all kinds of I tried I was walking No, the alkalines you can't. You can only take no, those to like Ikea. I can throw away, but I was walking around the pocket full of Duracell Supermax lithium from my nest. That's why I'm supposed to take those. I couldn't find anybody who would take them. I don't. I don't. Yeah. They and they'll take. They'll take like printers and monitors and whatever too. They sometimes charge you for like a whole TV though, which is annoying. They'll charge you to take a whole TV, so it's like bigger. But then they do the events. There's safe events. You go to Orchard Beach. You can throw all your. That's what I collect my stuff for. And then you take it over there one day. <laughs> Please do not leave it next to the reservoir. Take it to Orchard Beach at the safe pickup event, which is not announced yet. There are no safe events right now on the calendar for some reason, which maybe could be a request to have more of those. But they did not have a space on that was big enough. I that. Oh, yeah. Well, because you have to have somewhere to do like lanes of people for cars, for traffic. Oh. Right, but it's so important because of the fire risk around. They but that's why them. this. That's why actually this is really better because this was with drop-offs for buildings with. Oh, this is less than units. Yeah, I don't, is there? I don't think is there? Better anyway, because I, I, I mean, even like I'm, I live in a building with a lot of units. Um, but you don't have an e-recycling. We had an e-recycling locker. Which I nobody now it makes sense why it hasn't changed in years. Is the same crap is still in there. It was one something that got lost on that. Yeah, but that it, even so, it it builds it builds up. Like really, it would be better if there were events that we could you know on, on a regular basis. Right. So that we could just take off. the computers and things there. I used to work at a computer place, and we used to have be able to fill two or three dumpsters on one Saturday. I think I think we add on to this and just say as well as more safe events. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically the same request: more opportunities for electronics waste That's recycling. Exactly. So yeah. I think was I, I want to add. So we'll add that language into that same request and then leave it. Okay, that sounds great. As that now, are there other? We want to add new things or no? We we're, we're not in the world where we're adding new requests right now. No. Okay, no. I didn't think so. Though, so we are in the world of trying to which ones are first. <laughs> <laughs> or can we do that next month? <laughs> well, that's the question. David? Is this the April meeting? The April meeting, right? No, it's March. This is March. March meeting. Oh, right. We're, okay. it's March meeting. We're in March. Do we need a list, prioritized list for April, or do we talk about that at our April meeting? Uh, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm trying to... Hang on, one. bear with me. Sorry about that. Uh, um, no, the idea is to create an initial prioritization tonight, just, you know, a rough idea of where you're leaning and then confirm your final uh, priorities next month. Okay, well, we could do that. <laughs> you know, frankly, you may be happy with the order right now. That's fine. But you should, uh, you know, your, the group, your group there should agree. Right. There's also one list, right? So we have to like two we split it now, but really it's one list. The priorities are split between the two. Oh, I see. Oh, we have two yeah, they have to be two lists. Right. But one committee, so one prioritized list. This is a very fundamental exercise. Exactly. Okay. So the, but luckily the two capital priorities for sanitation are both um, the, same. the same, and they are going to fall through the roof, so they're probably pretty guaranteed to have something happen there anyway, right? Okay. So you're telling us that um, spite and dive balloon one yeah. capital? Yep. I think, I think so. Okay. Why not? That so sounds good. So happy. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then we're not. We're going to write up two capital. Yeah, I got one quick question right. around that. Um, just, uh, there is a, there is in the pond wall rebuild. Um, there's a shorefront park. Right. There's a lot of water that's running down along the, the uh, bridge because Jerry yeah. walking through. Um, is this water also, is that, is there anything with that pond and all that water and all the work that's being done that also should go 
go in, like have some sort of mitigation into the screening storefront, anything that may be connected somehow. She's making a wetland there. Yeah. So I think that one is funded but to the parks department. That one is funded and through the parks department. Do we need to? It, would it, is this just a totally separate project? And they don't right. need to. That, that right. water stays in the pond. It doesn't need to go into the river. The most it does is it, it seeps out into the little road there. So I don't think it really gets into the river, unless I, the I, whatever I, I, is holding it back, you know, fails. But that Karen, that's what. We're going to have the, to get the Zola block and lot number and all that and be really particular. Oh, you want me to do that now? I can do it now. You want the mm -hmm. Zola block and lot for some for this project? Yeah. For the spike and dive uh, outfall. For the, for the for the living shoreline. All right. Let me see if I can get it. So right now one, it says uh, it goes one second. From Marble Hill train train station to the right. spike and dive train station. Is that right? All right. So, are there any other capital priorities that we've neglected? No, so we right, but what would you, how do you rank, you know? Well, we only have one. We only have one. Well, I mean, for the expense. No, the oh, capital is only two. So you do, right, so fine. Spite and Dival is one, and sanitation the garage rehabilitation is two. I thought that the, with the garage rehabilitation, oh. they just had to... We think that this problem is taking care of itself. Are we not going to ask for this anymore? I think we should confirm it. Yeah, confirm it, I guess. Yeah, let's confirm. Seems, okay. I thought that that work was already... So let's look at our uh, it, it expenses. Yeah. It, uh, I, I, I put it there last year because he asked me, Steve Cruz. Okay. So that's okay. maybe okay. not even two. Maybe that's right. not even, maybe that's zero. Because we'll, right, I'll ask Steve Caruso. I'll ask Steve. That's who I've spoken with. Yeah. yeah. Tell him hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you okay. want me so to uh, take a picture of this map? Uh, I have the block and lot yeah, and the. You want me to send yeah, it to right. you? Okay. Yeah, so send it to the whole board, uh, to the whole committee. It's block 5716, yeah. lot 700. Thank you. And I'll send it all. Um, I'll take a screenshot and send it to you all. Okay. Great. What is that? 5716. <laughs> no, that's the. and Dival. That's the block in the lot. Is set, that's the waterfront property. DEP waterfront property. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, right. Because then. And then we're going to what's important to us. Yeah. Um, I feel like. Um, I feel like the compost project yeah. is the most vulnerable. Yeah. Well, they already oh expand your compost project and. Yeah. No, no. None of that exists. None of that's even happening, right? NYBG compost project got funded. Well, I guess NYBG paid brought back some of it, right? <laughs> well, now they're expanding composting for everyone, though, like a little bit. So it's like. Let's make that one. Wait or two. Oh, one, right? No, wait a minute. Let's, good Lord. Let's do motherhood and apple pie. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do motherhood and apple pie. Um, and I think I would like to have, alternate that with the. Um, Maybe we should pick our top five. Just, just pick our top five and then put them in order. What do you okay. Think? That way we've got our apple pie, we've got our meatloaf, we've got our. I mean, there's only seven. Exactly. We've right. well, we got what people see garbage dumping, those kinds of things. But I want to see, I like in the top three. I, I believe motherhood and apple pie should be one, two, but then. The feasibility study yeah, for the GR connector for things should be yes. top three. Okay, we'll yeah. put slide that in number three. Oh, if you're in compost. So is it compost on uh, motherhood and is um, I don't think compost is motherhood. Yeah. 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 It's really that, that's the civic life of yeah. a lot of people here. You should see what they do. Have you seen them in Riverdale Park? Uh, Henry Hudson Park? Well, the, what's interesting is the parks are also now the stewards are starting to do their own composting. They're not giving it to parks anymore in bags, like the leaves and stuff. Yeah. And then there's I, something I do my own composting. Really? Yes. Okay. And I just took all the soil out. I don't give anything to the city of New York anymore. You're a farmer. Uh, that's right. We have our own thing. Rob, you're a farmer. Yes. Where is he? When they kill the program. He's on the rainbow. Now he's got a milk. Uh, uh, <laughs> during, during COVID. During COVID. During, yeah, yeah. yeah. When they kill that program. Couldn't you have baked bread? Baked bread? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, mean, I would put stormwater management as the first.
the first one of the expenses. Right. Well, I think we're covering that. Like, if we do the JPR connector green infrastructure thing, we're kind of hitting on one of the two stormwater management things. No, right. It's a, I, I, want, I think you're right. No, I mean priority seven. Yeah. At least it's as it was listed now. I would say is our top one. But okay. Right. Thank you. That just feels like it's only. I mean, it only rains more and more. Thank you. And it never stops raining. So that, that, this is our new so reality that, here. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's only getting that, worse and that, worse. Right. So and it's not that we're not asking for these other things. We're just yeah. sort of. And number two would be compost. Would be. Or. Or number three would be well, compost. Two, maybe. Three is compost, and then number two would be number twenty-two, right? Which is residential litter patrol. Is that what we're talking about? Is that more garbage? Garbage. You know, just things mom, having yeah. to do with cleanliness. And then I would say that maybe if we want to have a fourth one, it would be the e-recycling. Right, I think so too. Four, and then, and then uh, Jerome Park. And then Jerome Park is that's always a good conversation. Well, we have the other. We have a separate. I mean, do we not? Should we not even the vacant lot cleaning? Is that really separate from residential litter patrol? Yeah. Yeah, and I think you should throw in the step streets. We should get the step streets cleaned like at least twice a year. Yeah, but they, it's been, they've been using. Um, yeah. Um, using a different group to do what the sanitation has been doing is all coming out of. DOT does the stairs and, and the it, stuff on the side is hard. Oh, what a memory! I mean, I'm sorry. Sanitation. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's usually, I mean, for some of them, the building is right? right? I actually but think then we do need. But then it's not Ca that Carol, no? David, what, what is oh. the name of the streets near you? DNS and DOT. Carol? You know, if we have a particular section. You said what, what cross? The step street. The step street. Yeah. Yeah. The city steps um, by the school, by the junior high school. What is that called? That is MSO. Yeah, but what are the step street called? By the, what's the step street called by the junior high school? I can't remember. Anyhow, there's one. There's I don't know if it's considered um, because they both land on um, Kingsbridge Terrace. Kingsbridge Terrace, one is more closer to kind of Perot, going up by Perot Street, and then the other one right. is um, the landing that's really on Cedric and drops down to Kingsbridge Terrace. Right. right. Yeah. And, you know, they have Perot done a nice the job at the one with the school. They, they did some beautiful artistic stuff. I thought it really was vibrant. I wish all the steps looked like that. It looked amazing. Is there a sanitation issue there at, on the sides of the there, street? There, of the mm, I don't see too much garbage on the side, I have to say, but at the bottom. Because, um, you know, there's different levels of it. So mainly at yeah, the bottom, they, they used to have um, trash cans there two years ago. I'm talking about when I was in my 20s. But they used to have, like, a trash can on each side that were black, if I'm not um, recalling correctly, there's really nothing there. Um, and you know, when those, when things like that kind of are neglected or not looking at, people don't. I'm good. I mean, someone fortunate. Well, that's why I'm saying put it in the thing to, to have them clean it every, twice a year. Yeah, they, I do it once, they, need, they need receptacles on top and um, on the bottom. Because imagine like you're heading to the train station on a hot summer day. And okay, maybe you're drinking something. Now you don't know where to throw it. You just they toss it. So you know it's things like that. That and you know a lot of parents well, are leaving with the kids in there. stuff like that. So is there a just, business there by any chance at the bottom of the step street? There are, is, is there um, a bodega kind of close and across the street yeah. from it. Yeah, because the sanitation uh, will work with the business so and supply the bags, and you'll get a can. Um, it, it, it's called, I, uh, it's out of my head, the Adopt name of the program. Adopt, Adopt, yeah, Adopt, Adopt, Adopt the can. can. Yeah. Yeah. Adopt um, the can. David, David, you had your hand up, sorry. The, the, that step street, that's Summit, right? That step street? Yeah. They're, they're, so that, that's the street they're where doing they Summit. Summit's yeah, being revented. That's, that's, yeah. All right, that's fully funded. So exactly, they may add a can. When I don't done, know what the, the next target is. The Summit, we, we spent five years. This is not Summit. We're not talking about Summit. This is this is above such summit. This is by the junior high school. Yeah, that's Perot, Karen. Yeah, Perot, right. Well, Perot's one is painted. That's what um, you're saying. 
So do either of these need a budget item? I don't think so. David, um, what do you have to say? Yes, um, uh, your audio is crackling, so I couldn't hear clearly. Are you talking about rehabilitating or maintaining the step streets? We're talking about sanitation pickup. It's sanitation. We're just talking about maintaining and wondering okay. who well, that falls under, if that's all right, uh, a budget frankly, item or just call through in one. Uh, frankly, that's something that the district manager can handle. I wouldn't make a yeah. budget request. I yeah. No, I know. Like the one in Marble Hill, the the Sea Town, that's at the base of it, sweeps it weekly, mm -hmm. multiple times a week. And the apartment building at the top sweeps their it's stairs tremendous. down halfway because their trash is like off the stairs, so their residents have to go like halfway down the stairs, right. and then the there's like an area for the trash. So they maintain like that whole section themselves too. So like, cause by, you know, mon by the end of Sunday or something like it's dirty again. And then Monday morning, they're like out there sweeping and they handle it. And right. They probably get bags from sanitation yeah. and they handle it. Cause um, the business at the bottom and the apartment building that's at the top. Like, Some people do it. kind of adopt it. And they handle it. Yeah. Because they go around their whole building. They have to give their residents, like, clear access down the steps to, like, the trash and recycling area. And that's for a lot of these. If you see a lot of trash, like, talk to the business or report it to sanitation, they'll talk to the business that they're supposed to do that. Because most businesses are still responsible for their, like, sidewalk, so why wouldn't they be responsible for steps if they're next to them? So is it, so it's going to be stormwater management that's on the, on the hilltop thing, that's number one. Mm -hmm. And number the two is um, expense, 22. Um, yes, so yes. And then number three is the compost project. And then number four is recycling. Yeah. And then five is, is that JPR or Tibbetts maintenance? I would vote five is Tibbetts JPR. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Because, right. right. Well, it's happening. Yes, yes, yes. Take it. I, I think that compost project is done. I think they've let everybody go. I don't know if they could pull it back up again. I think that the NYPG uh, chipped in some money for it, but a lot of most of it's gone. And the big reuse, all the community outreach is gone. So why would you put it in your uh, priorities? To get it going again? <laughs> well, because so, it also includes so, putting so the minute, smart compost minute, wait, bins wait, throughout wait, the district, no, which we don't have any of. Yeah, but so that's a new thing. That they're putting those some places. No, they're they? putting that in, but you don't want to put in to have them clean the step streets as, a, as an actual thing that the sanitation should do, clean the step streets twice a year. That's something that goes in as their responsibility. Whether they do it or not, you can judge them later, but they should be cleaning up that thing. And also picking and also doing the community stuff, but but cleaning cleaning the step streets need to be done twice a year at least. Yeah, but it's not a program. It's just a bothering them thing. No, it's a policy. They'll do it. You're voting They'll on a policy. They don't. They, they won't do it, it unless you put it down. They will do it without putting it down. They do it already. The sanitation. Do it tomorrow if you needed it. Right. Is it done regularly? She's asking. Well, nobody does anything without complaining. Yeah, you know, and I don't think it needs to. It needs to be more. I mean, twice a year, it needs to be like once a week. I mean, if probably, and if if it isn't, it they get dirty. Yeah. Runs on yeah. You call three one one. Someone will come and they'll remedy the situation. They'll the bigger, close your ticket. The bigger problem with the step street, like, like the two thirty eight step street, some of those is the the, the weed trees and the overgrowth that kind of get that. That's, that's, where, that's where parks start to that's get involved. That's where parks. But, but parks we're really the big top. Like they end up going in the step and tree. clear it all out. But, and then so the litter starts to collect yeah. the weeds and the overgrowth. Um, but sanitation seems to have budget for it, Karen. I mean, I hear what you're saying. And Wildcat, you know, the extra, the extra money to the council. Their, those programs yeah. used to do those heavy duty cleanups that come with the equipment. Remember that? Right, they would do totally. They, yeah, that wasn't even Department of Sanitation. Right, that was totally outside of it. Yeah, all. that was the extra sanitation money. All, all, I'm saying, all I'm saying is that you have a response. They, you're supposed to be talking about their budget requests and how they are handling their work in the, in the, in the district. 
and whatever it is that you think is a priority should be put in there. Now, that has nothing to do with, you know, getting 10 actual projects that are out, but that's what you think should be done. We have a lot of step streets. They need to be like focused on them. They clean the streets. Why can't they clean the step streets? You want to, um, to Karen's point about the compost project. It's hard to drive a street, street sweeper on the steps. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you could do it once, just going down. <laughs> well, this is just saying provide and expand community composting programs. So even if they're, they're responsible that this is funded, but we want it to expand, we want it to continue to be funded, I think that's an okay thing to keep asking for. Yeah. Because, and right, there's, and right, we can follow up with them about, right, as you say, how funded is it? But asking for it to continue to be or to expand it, I think, is great because it should be. It's obviously not big enough. I think what, what Karen is pointing out is that the NYC compost project, I don't know if it actually exists as a formal entity anymore. So it's like, I mean, maybe what we're really asking for is community so, is to restore the compost restore, project yes. and then also we to, want and community outreach. Like the, the organic collection stuff doesn't work unless you actually go and people how to... Well, that's a compost education, community case composting sites. Yeah, yeah. That, that's Joey's point. It yeah. doesn't work without the education. Without the education part. Yeah. So that's important. So it yeah. should be a restoration. Right. And I think it's good to keep it in there because exactly while they're expanding curbside, curbside is the perfect time to educate people about this to and get them to sign up and start doing it. Okay. Separating. So what do you and, want about this test? I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, is this even a real, is this such a concern? I don't, I, I don't think it needs to be in there. Because I think it's, I think, right, I think it's a, it's handled by the district manager. It handled it call through in one call, the community board office, if it's, well, if something's yeah, particularly more, bad. More people, well, so is it a matter of, let's just, let's just look at the budget priority here for, so we've got residential litter patrol, increased funding for manual litter patrol, particularly in Environmental justice designated areas, Kingsbridge, Kingsbridge Heights, Marble Hill, and in CDA. What Marble district. district street cleaning, full restoration of all street cleaning and pickup services required for clean streets in commercial district Marble Hill. Well, can we, can we, can the the, the, the manual, yeah, yeah, the manual litter patrol was Including for. Yes. Four sources of all street cleaning, pickup of services required for. That, that was described to us. We had a long tutorial on this. So that, 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 that was not step part street of funding areas like step streets. Yeah. yeah. That we were always putting in for equipment for them to clean these hard street cleaning and step street cleaning. Yeah. And that's number two. And they described this particular district as hard because there's yeah. hilltops yeah. and crevices Again, and valleys. And water is true. But because of the hills yeah. is why everything like washes cleaning, to yeah. one place. It's so Sounds like robotics. Line. Sounds like you really need robots for this. Right. Well, that's it. I mean, they can they can drive by with a street sweeper. They can't like drive up and down. We're adding step streets. So there you go, Karen. It's number three. Manual litter patrol. Number two. Number two. It's number two. Yes, you're right. Number two. Okay. Manual litter patrol. It goes under motherhood. Exactly. I, that makes sense, though. It's all pick up all the litter. Is there litter on the steps? We, we, we pick that up big, too. We had a big conversation. They taught us that. That yeah. they had. It's a separate request for street cleaning and then MLP. Well, you know that parks now have their litter, their litter team, right? Volunteers. They're, uh, they have the kids compete for uh, prizes by the, the amount of litter oh, they pick up. Oh, isn't that cute? This site is though based on a Hunger game. <laughs> street sweeping, <laughs> street sweeping not at okay. pre-COVID level? What? what? It was not. No, but is, is it still reduced now? Oh, uh, yeah. no, uh, is it? Oh, no, street sweeping. Oh, that yeah. I don't know. We, we went bird by bird. We, we did a lot of research. It, it has been, been reduced. It is reduced. Okay. I used to get street sweeping Mondays, Mondays and Wednesdays on one side, and Tuesdays and I believe Thursdays or Fridays. It's only Monday one side, Wednesday one side now. They, they, they didn't um, bring it back. And and the street sweeping, okay. I have to say, well, that's fine. Leave the wet wording in there. That's fine. Okay. Because yeah. more street, street sweeping is only of, better. Uh, that's fine. Because people double park, then it goes around them, and now it misses that whole part of the street anyway. So if it's two days later, it came back, then it would catch it. Right. Well, right. Did you walk? Yeah. 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 Yeah
No, so that's great. So that makes sense. This is a good order. I don't you guys are going to tell me about the hilltop plan. No. Were you so yeah, you going to do the and, a, and and more information about the Clayton Dival thing? I, I sent that fine. in the email to everybody. Everybody got the email on the on the hilltop and the Spite and Dival stuff. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. New business. New business. Is this for uh, legal? Support? Okay. My my work is done here. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you, David. I'll see you soon. David, I owe you a call. I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. See you guys all next month. Have a good uh, night. Did I not print this? I didn't print this. Um, so I'm making a joke here that I have to... Neighborhood the support team? Request the mayor's office. Is that for legal representation? No, it's for, it's for like, money. Oh, I didn't print it. What, what this is a link. If you click this, it's a link. I was going to say, it looks like... I clicked what, what, the what link, but it doesn't oh, say no you get paid. Get I don't think you get paid. No. I think it's volunteer work. It's volunteer. It's other volunteer work. Now that you're not on the community board, give it a couple weeks and you can join the neighborhood oh, support team. I have been really starving for volunteer opportunities. No, no. This is... <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I need to... I looked at the real... form. It doesn't say how much money do you want. It says you can work with the agencies. Yeah. yeah. What am I going to do? Supervise them or do the work? Which agency? I think it's... it's 14. Okay. So, um, Local Law 102 from 2016 requires the city to develop a list of no fewer than three geographic areas or community board districts that would benefit from interagency collaboration in addressing quality of life issues, such as, but not limited to, sanitation services, graffiti, road and sidewalk quality, street cleanliness, noise pollution, public space issues, and transportation. The neighborhood support teams will work within the community to clearly identify and understand the issues, create and execute a one-year action plan to address quality of life concerns, um, and they will use they will utilize existing city resources. They will vary depending on the location and issues. So basically, we should apply by April 4th, basically for our district to be considered for this. Yeah, these are all staffed by oh, uh, the, the city is basically being like, where should we help? Where do we have a not that requires a bunch of this? Yeah. It's almost like a district service cabinet for a small project. I think, I, I think the uh, board, uh, Julie, should write Right, well, this was just, I just saw the email, so I wanted yeah, to mention it, because it overlapped with a lot of our interests anyway, certainly. Yeah, so do you, I, I think we should. Uh, you know what, maybe, I guess, but advocate. all of CB8 needs to, I guess, apply, yeah. maybe. But we, we're charging you to advocate for DPC and sanitation. No, but you have to, you have to do a, a, a interagency place, like the reservoir which is a little bit of sanitation, a little bit of uh, parks, a little bit of DEP. An area of focus. And yeah. nobody knows what, who's doing what. Like also, it's Karen, I would like to, the, yes, the reservoir, but also the uh, MTA, um, Riverdale train station, where there's the flooding and uh, there's like inter-jurisdictional. I don't think it's right there. Even along the road, you were saying we don't know who's responsible for the no, road. I don't think it's, inter, I don't think it, I think it's, like it's the, Metro North is supposed to do it. That's, they don't do anything. They don't clean in front of their place. That the transportation okay. people don't do the right work. In Jerome Park, but we should, that's a great idea for a but there's a but dollars. there's something else that that you is similar but okay. I can't remember what it is. I don't know oh, what agency focus. I don't know what problem though they would be solving around JPR right now. Yeah. Um, great sentence to say. Um, oh my God. Dude. Hmm. This is like another layer. But it's April 4th. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's by April 4th. But right, I know they just. You know, uh, this is another layer of work. Um, for volunteers to do, I believe this is no. The written no. These are staffed by agency people. Yeah, these are these it's are interagency co yeah. like co cooperative. Yeah, yeah, you're in the best. Yeah, yeah, this is not about volunteerism. This is about bringing a planning multiple issue. agencies cooperating but, on a problem. But to get picked, you need you need a quality of life issue. Yes, yeah, but to get picked, I think uh, civic people do it. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. I but mean, you're a sounding board for that. Right. That's the volunteer part. Somebody's volunteering okay. so to I, pull I this we together would, to attract them. 
Yeah, well, it's like applying for a grant. I mean, they're, right, they're right. going to give you... If, if we were to be, I think an EJ zone like Marble Hill would be a good candidate if we could identify right, agencies there. But so much of it... Could. What about the garbage? So much totally could. I, I think also that thing at Wave Hill might be uh, interagency because I'm suspicious that it's... Wave Hill is a park, right? And then um, it's exactly. the DOT. And then there's not enough uh, drains from the DEP. And that yeah, might happen quicker. Because, you know, what, what, what I find interesting about that is that Alderbrook Stream, which is kind of where this water is going down to, um, is also getting overrun with uh, the volume of water coming down the hill going to the river. And so the, the Natural Resources Group for Parks has already can't come and talk to us about how they need to do remediation, but it's just like they need, they need to do work again on Alderbrook, even though they did it maybe 10 years ago. There's so they much water from Wave Hill, inside Wave Hill with their hills and their hills of grass yes. that go down. And they, and they put them in like these little drains. I've been there. I walked that because we were trying to figure out how to take care of it. And then that, it eventually, it feeds into that, uh, that Alderbrook thing, even though it's coming in from the other end. You got to walk on, yeah. on the premises. Yeah, and some of the residents who live along um, the, what's that name of the road? Well, the, the, the each Spalding Lane. Lane, some of those residents. Each request for expression of interest will be evaluated on its merits and scored based on objective criteria to be determined by the city. So they're like, we will fully decide if your area is good well, enough. Sure. Also, this is not, and Wave Hill, though, is not environmental justice, so just uh, No, no, what's it? We're saying no, something no. by Wave Hill, or right. I mean by Marble Hill would make more sense. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. So, well, one of their things that was equal access to city services and community centers. So can we raise the point that they should extend the wait, wait. greenway past Marble Hill houses yeah, because they're not providing equal access to this environmental right. justice zone right. to right. a new good. greenway? You're stopping it right before them and then putting it underground into a pipe. A policy and request. I have not, to. I, I have you don't need it. A group of agency staffers to. Well, it is. It's between a couple agencies because. Well, they are working together anyway. DOT, well, right. DOT, DOT, they're doing DOT, it. DOT, they're running the pipe DOT. under there. But they're also wondering. We saw last night. We saw the Greenway plan for Bailey. By the way. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's not Broadway. It's Bailey. They're definitely doing that. But they have, um, and they have night to do. I think that the impersonal. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Bronx Wait, Brewery. where? Bronx Brewery. No, no, along Bailey. Oh, they did the Bronx Brewery. So it's going to stop. They don't have a really connector between 230th and Bailey yet, though. So there's a lot of work to do there. And, um, you know, it would be redundant, so to speak, of the Greenway planning, but it can also put more bodies there and have more, like a little local cell of community um, advisory to plan what's But also that, two, that whole corridor at 230th Street is unsafe for people to be walking around, let alone riding bikes. There's there, only there are one, traffic well, there's there's only one crossway. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm advocating for Marble Hill. So I have the statistics from that whole area if you need it. I can send you that okay. also. There's still flooding there, yeah. Well, tons of flooding. I mean, Marble Hill has because they're bounded by... They get, they get like water from like both sides. So is the ask maybe for um, better water, like water runoff and like traffic like for DEP, DEP, the infrastructure right there. The whole should be between Bailey and Broadway. Between 230 and Bailey and Broadway. When do you need this? No, April 4th. I mean, for your committee purpose. I mean, going to exec, because I assume they're going to get this at exec, right? Yeah, right. yeah, no, we would have to have an expression of interest form by April 4th, which is right here. I, I would be happy to write. Maybe, maybe there's an application form, form that makes it more straightforward. And maybe no one knows about it. Describe a particular area. It's just this form online to do. Okay. Um, which is not long. It's like two little paragraphs. And then right. to check off which things. Here. Um, I'm going to. Okay, thank you, Dana. This is really good. Is so I like the. Is there a drawing or was it all just... Very rough. I don't know how you're going to get from one side of the Deegan to the other. That's what I want them to focus on because you have to cross the overpass. They're getting out of the... I don't know. 
at 2.30. Green light. And then getting to Bailey. But then we can throw all the other problems that we know that as long as they're there, they might as well work on them. And that may get picked because they're already there. So we want to connect the park with Down Bailey? I don't know. I want to read about that. Send me the stuff about that. I will make a proposal. Yeah. I will send it to you. Okay. I, just, I just emailed you their form so Bailey, so to see what Bailey the two Greenway, questions they ask. Bailey, 230, or does the Bailey Greenway go all the way down to Sedgwick? And Bailey Greenway begins at 230. The proposal of interest, yeah. Probably will go to uh, Sedgwick. Right. All the way down Bailey. Expression of interest. Well, is all it is. Like attached files. So, so like if you had like a thing for that, you could like attach that. Or down Bailey somehow. You see all the money that went to the Queensway? Hundred and seventeen million in federal funds. It's incredible. It's like a rail it's called Queensway. Yeah. They're doing property acquisition, it's a big deal. Like a, it's a little bit of a rails to trails thing, so yeah. it's easier. It doesn't have the engineering challenges that yeah. are, you know, but it's a lot of money and it it's, comes out of the infrastructure bill. Yeah, it's the biggest project in New York right now. We're jealous. Yeah, 117 million. And more. There's even more. Yeah, yeah we were supposed City. to get raise funding for the Harlem River Greenway, and we actually don't have it. We have infrastructure planning money, Biden infrastructure planning money. But um, we, even that isn't going all the way down. Um, the Hudson River Greenway, I mean, it's just going to end in Spite and Dive, all right? Actually, the Greenway is nowhere. There's no plan to loop over through Spite and Dive. Okay, I'm, right. I, I, I move that we adjourn. Thanks, Karen. I second. All right, perfect. Thank you. We're done. We're just talking about the flight dive on the Hudson River Greenway now. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Because we are going to send you an email about that they're the, like, the, if, the, if it were all funded and happened. It's still on. Well, I think the. the, 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 the <laughs> okay.